This is a quick start video for the Hobie Mirage Compass and also the Compass Duo. The boats are very similar. So we'll talk about installing the seat backs, installing the Mirage Drive, adjusting the Mirage Drives, installing your rudder, and just a few other quick tips to help you the first time or first few times out on the water. The boat has an owner's manual with quite a bit more information in it. So if you have any other questions, refer to that. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that most of you purchased from retailers that probably unwrap the boats for you and maybe even did most of the setup. But if not, I'll put some footage in there of opening the boat from the packaging. It's not hard, there's nothing too bad about it. One tip, if you're using a knife, a utility knife, I would recommend putting it down and using the blade to cut out and away. Cut your tape away, don't cut down into the boat. There is bungees and soft materials that you could hit. Other than that, it's real simple. So to install the rudder on the Compass or Compass Duo, the screw that we'll need to attach it is already as assembled. So we'll actually take a Phillips head screwdriver, we'll back this screw out of the injection molded nylon. We'll put this rudder up into place and get it to seat with the rudder drum that's on top of the boat. And one thing to note, this has to go all the way up to where this flange is flush against the hull but also this, this key fits into a key here. So we want the drum to be in the same orientation. If it's turned to the left, the rudder has to be turned to the left in order for it to seat up inside there. So we can start by kind of moving the drum out of the way, making sure that pushes all the way up there and we get a feel for where that is. And this rudder drum is pretty tight because the rudder lines are so tight which is gonna be a good thing later on. You want that whole system to be nice and tight. So once that's connected, the same screw now from above, And I recommend no power tools here. This hand screwdriver, just one screw, and that'll give us a good gauge just to snug it up. We don't need it to be too tight. And then we can even go forward and test that we did everything right. Should move nice and smooth. That's left to right. And then our up control brings it up and drops it back down. That's it, we're all set. Now that it's on, we can take these instructions off. A few other things to note while we're here. This is our wear skeg on the bottom of the hull. So if you ever did start wearing through that, that's a replaceable part. This is the drain plug. Should come pretty tight, but you just want that snugged up. There's an O-ring on there to keep it nice and snug. And then right here is your serial number. Moving on to the seat back. The front of the seat here, there's a kickstand. I'm gonna put that down. And this back bar, I'm gonna, install into these two little black sockets. So we kind of line it up left to right, put my hand on the bar and push down. It'll pop in on both sides. And then there's two little bungees. And we'll stretch those over as a little extra security just to make sure it stays in there. And you'll notice the seat back straps, there are little loops here on the seat. We'll install it there when we want to use the seat out of the hull as a standalone beach chair. But for when we're using it in the kayak, we're gonna install these to the side of the boat right here. So we'll attach those into the strap, attach. The side straps are gonna adjust how much you lean back. And there are adjustments down here that tension both this lumbar and the bottom cushion. So you, you can adjust that as well. And then there's a handy little pocket here with even a little gear clip to keep items close close at hand. This is your Mirage Drive 180 with kick-up fins. So I'll chat a few things about the adjustment and just things in general to note about the drive. But when I go to install it, the first thing you'll know, the cassette well may be in the Mirage Drive well. And to get that out, the click and go knobs, I'm gonna pull the heads of these back towards the seat and then I can pop this out. And when I popped it out, it made a click. That's resetting itself. So we can set the cassette well aside. And when I install the drive into the boat, it'll lock in and click automatically. So it's securely attached to the boat now and it's ready to be used. In general, longer legs, 
you'll put the drive further forward. But ultimately what you're looking for is similar to a bike. You want your knees to go almost straight, but not lock completely straight. So if it's too close to you, it'll just feel too cramped, too far away. It'll feel like you're reaching to get a full pedal stroke. And this may change throughout the day, depending on how much you're kind of sitting upright or slouching in the chair. Or if you recline your chair, you might find that you need to adjust the drive. If you're spending a long day on the water, you may find that you'll actually be more comfortable just by changing up the length a little bit, just to work a little bit different muscle group. When you do make changes to the length, you just push the gray button in, hold it in, move it to the desired location. And when you let the gray button go, you'll hear a snap when this pin locks back into the next adjustment point. To remove the drive is just like to remove the cassette well. So the click and goes will go back towards the seat. And as I lift the drive up, you can hear a third click. That's resetting itself. So it's ready to be locked in again when I go to use it again. This is a 180 drive. So it's facing forward right now. And to shift, I just pull on the red lever. Fins flip around. And now I'm going to be pedaling into reverse. And one thing to note about shifting from forward to reverse or reverse back, when your feet are all the way, one foot all the way forward, one foot all the way back, these fins are actually right up flush against the bottom of the boat. One tip when you do shift from reverse to forward or forward back to reverse, when your feet are together, the fins are straight down. When your feet are totally se separated, these fins are right up flush against the bottom of the boat, not adding any draft. But if you notice when I shift, one fin spins clockwise and the other counterclockwise. So if the fins are up flush against the bottom of the boat, one fin is gonna flip down and the other is gonna try to flip up and it can add some extra resistance to your shifting. So the first few times it might be good to keep your feet pretty close to together and that way there's no extra resistance there. And once you get the hang of it, you'll notice that a little bit of moving off the bottom of the hull makes that shift happen. And then you can even make a short stroke. You know, once I've, once I've shifted, then I can actually take a short flutter stroke and back out of a shallow area, which is really neat. The kick up fin feature on this drive is ready to go out of the box. And what it does is if I were to impact the bottom this fin can snap away. And then to fix it, all you have to do is keep pedaling. Because when you pedal, this fin actually wants to drive itself forward and it'll lock back into place automatically. There are some adjustments for the kick up. This little black screw, it's a Phillips head adjustment. What that does, if I kick the fin up, there's a little recess notch. So I, if I tighten this screw, it'll make it harder for them to break away, but also a little bit harder for them to lock back into normal position. So over time, you know, they're gonna be nice and stiff when you get the boat. And over time, you might notice that they loosen up a little bit and it's a personal preference. I personally like them to be pretty loose. So even if I hit, you know, seaweed or kelp in the ocean, they'll sometimes break away and I'll just clean that stuff off. But some people like them to be locked into position and not break away so easy. When you make adjustments to the screw, make sure that the fin is broke back so there's no resistance on it. Make your adjustments, then put it back, kind of test it out. So don't screw this in tighter with the fin locked in the down position. Other than that, the drive's all set, ready to go. It's marine grade stainless steel. If you use it in salt water, it's a good idea to rinse it off in fresh water. Um, we have some Hobie lube that's not a bad idea to put on the drive every now and then, but other than that, the water usually flushes everything out of there and keeps it nice and clean, and then just a rinse with fresh water when you're done. The setup for the Compass and the Compass Duo is very similar. The rudders, they install identically on both hauls. The seatbacks are the same seatback, and they install the same way. The Duo does come with just one paddle, but you can put it on either the left or the right-hand side of the boat. The Duo comes with two drives, one that is a 180 and one that is a GT. These are both great drives. They're both kick up fins. They're both fully adjustable and it's interchangeable which drive goes in which part of the boat. 
If it were me, I would put the 180 with the more experienced user. So if I was taking a friend out and I had them in the front of the boat and I was sitting in the back, I would take the 180 into the back with me. I've done river trips with my wife. She usually sits up front. Honestly, I would probably give her the 180. She has a better vantage point from the front and I would kind of have her in charge of navigating, but ultimately you can choose either drive and either drive well. With the drive installed there, you'll notice this other small bungee that comes off the hatch. That's a handy place to store your shifters, just a little lower and out of the way. This bungee with the hanger that comes off the seat is a handy tool for locking the fins where your fins are up flush against the bottom of the boat and not creating any extra draft. This is the two-piece paddle that comes with the compass. So you put the two ends together. Right in the middle there, when the B button pops in, that's a neutral paddling position, or you can feather it either way, and then you can attach it to the boat with the bungee right here. Stretch the bungee over the paddle and back around that little hook. Last few items, this is your owner's packet. It includes the owner's manual as well as the warranty registration card for your boat. This is two extra little set screws for the kick-up fins for the Mirage Drive. And then this packet is for if you install a fish finder on your boat. So all the waterproof connections to go through the hull and when you mount the transducer in the transducer cavity that this hull features, it has the small parts for holding the transducer into place. Last thing to note is parts and accessories. Hobie has a massive catalog of accessories that fit on either hull. They also have every little replacement part. So if years down the line some little piece goes missing, you can come back and you can find it for your boat. A few of my favorite accessories, Hobie's plug-in cart, it plugs into the hull and it makes transport very easy. It's kind of like a wheelbarrow. You just carries most of the weight of the hull and you grab the bow and walk it down to the beach or up the trail or back to the car. We have different wheels depending on the surface that you're gonna roll the boat on or how far you're gonna go or how many other items you're gonna stack on your boat, how easy you wanna make it. We have a whole suite of tie-down accessories, rack pads for roof racking the boat. We have a line of covers to cover the boat. If you're keeping it at the end of the dock, you can just cover it up, keep the hull looking nice and shiny for years to come. That's it for the quick start video and the setup of your kayak. If you have any other questions or concerns, anything comes up, you can reach out to your local distributor, retailer, or you can go to hobie.com. There's a support section and go to the Mirage Compass or the Compass Duo. 